Case of back pain, using our mnemonic old cards, will note the onset, or when did your back pain begin? Did it come on suddenly, or was it more gradual? And do you remember what you were doing at the time? For the location, we'll ask our patient as best they can to point with one finger. And during the palpation, we'll pay particular attention to note if it's paraspinal or on the spine itself. For the duration, we'd like to know if your back pain has been constant since it started, or is it more intermittent? And if that's the case, we'd like to note the frequency. That is, how long does an episode of pain last, and how many episodes have you been having, per day or per week? Next, we can note the progression. Has your back pain appeared to be occurring more frequently or more severely? Or, if there has been no progression, we'll also be sure to state that in our patient note to show that we've asked. To help characterize the pain, we'd like some descriptors, sharp or dull, among others. And, since they could evolve the nerves, we can ask now or later in our review of symptoms of any radiating pain, numbness, tingling, or motor weakness, aggravating and alleviating factors, radiation, treatments tried, and severity on a scale of 1 to 10. And again, if there are no aggravating and alleviating factors or radiation, we'll also be sure to state that in our patient note to show that we've asked. For all cases, let's order a CBC, serum electrolytes, an x-ray of the lumbar spine, MRI of the lumbar spine, and if we have any radiculopathy or myelopathy, as we'll see above, a nerve conduction study and an electromyogram. In a lumbar muscle strain, our supporting points will include low back pain, the onset will be occurring after lifting, and it will be progressively improving. We won't see any radiculopathy or unilateral radiating pain, numbness, tingling, or motor weakness, and it can be alleviated by conservative management, including ice, NSAIDs, or muscle relaxants. In lumbar osteoarthritis, also commonly referred to as degenerative joint disease or DJD, we'll see low back pain. The onset here and now is more gradual and it'll be progressively worsening as compared to the lumbar muscle strain. We could have a radiculopathy or a unilateral radiating pain, numbness, tingling, or motor weakness, and it could be aggravated by walking and alleviated by sitting forward. Our patient tends to be older, and if we have radiculopathy, we could also see lower motor neuron symptoms, particularly if there's an osteoarthritic bone spur impacting the nerve at the foramen, including delayed deep tendon reflexes. In lumbar disc herniation, particularly a lateral disc herniation, that will result in narrowing of the nerve at the foramen. So we'll have a low back pain, and now we'll have a positive radiculopathy, or unilateral radiating pain, numbness, tingling, or motor weakness. It can be aggravated by walking or movement and alleviated by sitting forward. And since the herniation is impacting the nerve at the foramen, we could see lower motor neuron findings, including delayed deep tendon reflexes and a positive straight leg raise, as we'll see in our physical exam coming up. In lumbar spinal stenosis, for example, from an osteoarthritic bone spur, a posterior disc herniation or ligamentum flavum hypertrophy, this will result in narrowing in the spinal canal. So we'll have a low back pain, and now we'll have a positive myelopathy, classically a bilateral radiating pain, numbness, tingling, or motor weakness. It can be aggravated by walking and alleviating by sitting forward. And since it's impacting the canal itself, we'll have now upper motor neuron symptoms, including hyperreflexia, urinary incontinence, and we could have a positive shopping cart sign, as we'll also see in our physical exam coming up. In a lumbar vertebrae fracture, we'll have a low back pain and lumbar and high yield point tenderness. The onset tends to be sudden, and we could have either no nerve findings, a radiculopathy, or a myelopathy, uni or bilateral radiating pain, numbness, tingling, or motor weakness. It can be aggravated by walking or movements, and will find limited relief by conservative management because the underlying fracture is still a problem. The fracture can produce pain at night, nocturnal pain when lying down or sleeping, and the patient is classically postmenopausal female. And again, depending on where the fracture is impacting, if it's at the foramen, we could have lower motor neuron signs, including a delayed deep tendon reflex, or if it's impacting the nerves in the canal itself, we could have hyperreflexia with urinary incontinence and a positive shopping cart sign. In metastatic cancer, either breast, prostate, lung, or even multiple myeloma, we'll see low back pain, lumbar and high yield point tenderness, and again, we could have either no nerve findings, a radiculopathy, or myelopathy, uni or bilateral radiating pain, numbness, tingling, or motor weakness. We could also have systemic symptoms, including fatigue and the characteristic weight loss, decreased appetite or night sweats seen in cancers, and a positive family history. And again, depending on where the cancer is impacting, we could have lower motor or upper motor neuron symptoms. If at the foramen, it will be delayed deep tendon reflex, and if it's in the canal itself, we could see a hyperreflexia with a urinary incontinence or shopping cart sign. 
and will adhere to our workup a breast exam, rectal exam, chest x-ray for lung cancer, and protein electrophoresis for multiple myeloma. And finally, in lumbar osteomyelitis, we'll have a low back pain, lumbar, and high yield point tenderness. And again, we could have either a node nerve findings, a radiculopathy, or a myelopathy, uni or bilateral radiating pain, numbness, tingling, or motor weakness and particularly high yield if we're given fever that should be concerning for an osteomyelitis. The pain can also be nocturnal with a history of skin trauma, abrasions, cuts, diabetes, or IV drug use. And we could have lower or upper motor neuron findings depending on if the infection could be occurring at the foramen or the canal. If at the foramen, we could see delayed deep tendon reflexes. And if in the canal, we could have a hyperreflexia with urinary incontinence and a shopping cart sign. And we'll add blood cultures. Begin our back exam with hand sanitizer and we ask our SP if we could begin the exam. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to continue our mnemonic GI PROM MSRP. So we'll come around the back and we'll inspect the back and we'll verbalize that there are no visible lesions. And we'll go ahead into palpation. So at any point, if you feel pain, please let me know. Mm -hmm. And we'll start on the spinous process. We can get a good two finger grip here and just press inward. We'll work our way down. Okay, a little right here. Okay. And now we could continue to power spinal tenderness, and we could use three fingers here and just go a little bit off center. So please let me know. We'll go left to right. Yes. Oh, the right side. A little bit here on the right side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right here as well. Yes. Okay. And we'll continue that all the way up. And now, could you please turn around? And for economy of movements for the back exam, we'll skip over range of motion for the time being and we'll dive into MSRP. For motor strength on the lower extremities, could you please kick out? Okay, good, so that's five out of five. Now, could you please kick in? Good, five out of five. Now we'll go into sensation. So please close your eyes and let me know if you feel this equally on both sides. Yes, I do. Okay, great. And now we're gonna go into pinprick. So this is a pinprick. I'm gonna start on your left side and please let me know if you feel this all the way down. Yes, I feel it. Okay, and now I'm going to go on to your right side, so please let me know if you feel this. Yes, I do, but not as much. Okay, so we have decreased the pinprick on the right side. And now I'm going to go into reflexes. So we could instruct them to relax, and we'll do a patellar reflex. So a normal patellar reflex would be like 2+, plus. and then if we were concerned like hyperreflexia or B12, uh, we would get a hyperreflexic response. So just relax, and you'll see something like this. We can continue to demonstrate with the, the tap on his Achilles tendon. So we'd start right here, and we would we would get a normal reflex. And if this was a case of B12, and we were concerned about hyperreflexia, he would give us a dramatic uh, response. Okay, you feel that. We could also test while we're down here a Babinski. So we could start on the bottom of the sole and go into the big toe. And note, if he had a positive Babinski, his toes would curl up. Pulse. We're going to go behind the medial malleoli. And we'll feel for the pulse, two plus pulse. And then we could do the same thing on the left extremity and verbalize we have a two plus bilaterally. Okay, now that we've finished with the lower extremity, we'll go ahead and hand sanitize again. Please take a few, some steps forward. And we know he's walking with a little bit forward flexion. And now come back. So we have a positive shopping cart sign. Okay, and while you're still standing. Uh, we can do range of motion, so please try to use your hands to touch your toes. Put your feet together. Yeah. Okay, good. So he's able to touch his toes. And now, you can stand back up. See so if you can extend all the way back. And let me know if you have any pain there. It's just a little bit. A good extension with a little bit of pain on the right side. And now, if you go to the left. Okay, do you have any pain? Yeah. Just a little on the right. A little on the right as well. Yeah. Okay. And now if you can go to the right. Any pain? A little bit on the right. Okay. Thank you. Now you can have a seat again. And we'll finish the back exam with a special test. We want to do a straight leg raise. So if you could please lie down. We'll start with the left lower extremity. And I'm going to raise your leg up and please let me know if you have any pain, if you feel any shooting down. No. No? Okay, great. Yes. You I do? Feel, yeah, okay, and what like do you it, feel? I feel like it's going down this Shooting down. Okay, so we have a positive straight leg raise test on the right-hand side. Now 
Let's see that up. Do you have any questions for me?